G'day, welcome to our case study, um, case study seven, which is a vet in the V chain. And what we're going to look at the life cycle so far of a vet and uh, look at what's taken place, look at where we could have taken opportunities and the lessons learned, and, uh, and we take it from there. So if you go to my website, case seven, you will find this documented. Now, looking at vet when it first came in, I believe this is the earliest period, July 18, just when Bitcoin found its bottom. So this orange line is Bitcoin's bottom at the end of the bear market. So VET came in at a bad, I suppose came at a good time, but there was a, a period of accumulation. So just to give you a comparison where it is, or where it was when it came in, bear market, and then, then we had this follow-up of the bull market. And obviously we had here, right there, the COVID incident. So let, let's mark that. We want to have areas of reference. So we can say that COVID, X1, so we just know what, what we're talking about at the time. So I can get rid of this Bitcoin chart okay so it is pretty logical to so we put the log chart on so we can have a, a bit of a zoom because that price is very low and during that bear market it, uh, that found its bottom right there and this is a COVID incident so if we were to bring that up Okay, we can probably get rid of that now. It's not working with the, the log. Maybe put it up there. There we go. Cool. That is the COVID incident. As you can see, the COVID incident uh, capitulated much more. So this was a, a golden opportunity to buy. And that, that is applicable to many coins. So capitulation almost to oh, geez that is a tenth of a cent that would have been a perfect opportunity to buy and whoever bought that would be laughing that would be to the top 16 percent far out anyway so that's those are the opportunities that I only come probably once in a lifetime COVID uh, these these black swan events. Now looking at this chart, let's, let's start with what we understand is accumulation and the, and the bottom. Why we think this is the bottom? Well, you can see that it, it touched it three times actually, two or three, two separate instances where price was held. And uh, if we ignore this COVID incident, then this pretty much was the bottom in. If we to look at Bitcoin, there was something of a similar structure where we had the V shape and it was a Adam and Eve type of formation or a reversal uh, triangle. So if we were to trade this on the bear market, you would have had to trade it not knowing where the bottom was. So once this bottom was established over here, let's, that would have been a perfect reference point in the future to buy again. So double bottom and up it goes. But that is hindsight and obviously not easy to trade. We can see that here there was a, a triangle bottom. And the breakout of that would have been our trading opportunity. Now, if I was to go to the one hour and zoom into that, using our method, we'll apply the 1350 moving average to that structure. It's going to take me a while to get there. Now, hopefully, we won't go too long with this video. So, um, but anyway, let's start with this scenario 
and there we go. So if we were to apply our 1350 moving average onto that and put the ribbon in there. No, that's not the wrong 1315. It's this one here. And across over. So if we look at that structure, we can see that we have the ABCD formation if this chart fills up there, which, which just seems to struggle. It's not doing the job. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure why it does that. The two hour, where is it? Okay, so the two hour works, but the one hour struggles. Well, let's work with the two hour. As you can see, the pressure is to the upside, many touches, and we have somewhat the bottom established here. We couldn't, have, we couldn't have known this, where the bottom was, so this was going to be difficult, but once we got that crossover here, that would have been a good entry as well. Why? It makes sense because this is capitulation and then the, the moving average, we, we wouldn't have known how high it would have gone, but that would have been a wedge formation to break, a, a breaking of a wedge formation. Having that th uh, 1350 EMA crossover uh, at a capitulation makes a lot of sense to uh, buy, uh, buy in. And the target would have been pretty much based on that wedge, really. So that roughly this would have been one, one position or the top there. So there would have been two targets based on just wedge formation. Okay, so let's just make that darker, make everything clear. This is a case study, so we want to make sure we document it right. But that is a lesson to be learnt. When this price, price capitulates and you get a, a, a wedge type of formation and a break and a crossover on the 1350, this would have been on the one out within the structure that we could have entered earlier. But if we were to look at the candlesticks, Right there, you can you can sort of see that it's a bottom formation as well. We've been better off probably on the four hour over here, but the fact that we got a crossover, if we were to make this accurate, our lines would have been roughly. So that 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 line would have been yeah right there. So what it's done is it's broken above it, found support, and this is the confirmation. So it was building up. You can see that line building up. It's holding that level. More holding and then taking the moving average. And then that big, this candle here would have been the signal to buy in straight after that 1350 crossover. This is a two hour, so I would have had it a bit earlier. And now obviously the stop loss would have been somewhere underneath there. So that would have been a great opportunity and keep that in mind for future um, opportunities. So that, that's an example. Now if we were to apply Fibonacci to this level, from there to the top, you can see that it's, it's past those um, 0.5, even the 618. So that was a pretty bullish move and that would have been the first sign of a reversal, I would imagine, because a bounce was not a dead cat bounce. So let's look at. Yep, we 
got the logged on, so we we'll add our log on to that. And you can see that would have been our target. The first target will have been right, roughly there, based on the formation. It really depends on how you draw these lines. Um, that makes sense based on uh, the Elliot, Elliot um, correction wave. So you will have a bounce up, down, the top. That'll be now A, B, C, D, and E. So that makes sense. Um, that you can refer to this formation, the A, B, C, D, E, on the Elliott cycle correction. So let's put that in there. Okay, so let's get rid of that. I'll leave it and just change the color for that. And that's it. So we, we pretty much hit roughly where the, um, B was, and that makes sense. So B would have been our target once we identified that, and that was perfect, hit the target, and then there was a big sell off. So let's put that into a bucket. We'll say that's 2018. Moving along, we would have just looked, wouldn't have a clue that was the bottom. We would have just traded that and we, we pretty much hit the top. That would have been a good opportunity to sell. Obviously, that was a big sell off. <clears throat> and the second sell off, we would have looked at an entry point. 382 makes sense. So it went slightly over. That would have been a good pullback. We'll have been watching for so once we got this, um, we would have taken a percent, you would have taken a percentage along the way. That would have been a hundred percent. And once we've got this again, another 1350 crossover, that would have been another bearish sign, although this top formation candle would have told us that that's a reversal. Um, you can see there's three black swan, uh, three black crows. There's a whole bunch of different time frames, but you can see that is a reversal, especially this big red candle. That would have been the signal to leave or exit. And then we got this 1350 crossover. It would have been better if we got on the one hour. So I'm gonna to try to go back to the one hour. That's why I wanna want work with the one hour. So trading view doesn't get the one hour in that area. So it only does the two hour. So we, we can't get that information. It doesn't go back that far. That's that's a shame. So we got this other formation and then we're on the we'll need to look at the break, the reversal which is right there again. There's another 1350 moving average crossover, the last stage and we could have looked at that as a, a trade let's let's look at the two hour so that would have been a opportunity there but unfortunately the, the charts aren't playing with us at the moment the one hour doesn't go all the way back and it goes up to this point so we just make do with that and i'll keep that in mind with the other case studies as you can see, if we use a two hour, that was a one hour and roughly was there. So two hours is not much far off. Looking at this formation, we wouldn't have a clue what was going on. Ain't that the fact that this was an isolated trade and we would have watched. Now you can see price causing another triangle. And we had a 1350 crossover there as well. Right. I believe I've got that. 
here we go so that would have been a trade the target would have been here and the rest would have been bonus so we could have applied Fibonacci onto that to get a, another target the fact that we had this point at the time and we had let's, let's do that again we had this point and we had this point as reference we would have just drawn that line and seen where it would have taken us okay and if we put the auto in we could straighten that line out a bit better so let's let's just fix that that's our point of reference and you can see we were just drawing that line and just use that line because we've got two t resistance points and when we, if we were to make this trade based on this triangle breakout to the upside retest on the, the structure and then up it goes <clears throat> this would have been the target there based on the triangle now we would have applied the height of this triangle and move the whoops we've grabbed that applied it to the breakout and that would have been our target perfect so that within this structure we would have made a second good trade based on this so second lesson learned a sell off third and you will probably take 50 percent not knowing that you might you might keep going up in this case it was uh, a, a pretty much sell off again now do we have anything to go with this not really except the horizontal level so this would have been what would have put, we would have put as a support level and we would use that going forward but anything below that if it came down here we would have looked to buy because that would have been a double bottom so if this was our buy zone for now anything in this buy zone so let's let's just make that evident Right, that is our buy zone because of this action we, because of this result and there we can see that it's taking formation and it didn't come quite didn't come quite there so we, this is a second level of support and when price came down you can see that there was buying and and it dropped just below and i wouldn't have bought, bought that to tell the truth so that wouldn't have been an opportunity however would have had this line across you can see that that was resistance and again similarly we had this formation 1350 crossover on the one hour we would have bought in <clears throat> likely to be stopped out there and 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 lost an opportunity to trade so that would have been a rough period to trade now that i would have looked for accumulation if i bought that in and then that came and we sold out i would have held on to probably 30 percent of my coins at that stage and just traded that and uh and well not sure what i would have done there but the target was there and that so i would have basically looked for something along these lines and it didn't quite work out maybe like that where that could have been the a b c d e and it didn't so i, would, I wouldn't have known what the formation was but i would look for a bonding formation obviously that was the case this was it not to know but once we've got that <coughs> so here i wouldn't probably trade it's just it's just too much damage i would probably short there shorting there because of the triangle so sell this is not our a so this is what's really taking place from a bottom formation this is our a that's our b that's our let's look, where's our c c d and e that would have been our trade so this didn't quite come down so we would have had something like that really Along those lines, that would have been close enough. So I would have put that line there. 
that is our bottom line. Um, if you look on the four hour, it's probably a week. But this makes sense. And obviously a bit of a dip. And again, when you get the crossover, so we have another formation there. So we need to, the formations are pretty important if you know how to read them. So if we in another wedge, the target will be in that height. Right there, that will be in our target, and we've got it there. And you can see a bit of a sell off, but now we've got this trend. It's broken this big triangle, so this is bound to go. So this, if I was to recognize that, I wouldn't have sold. I would have kept holding it to, to the point of A. So this, this would have been our target. Right there. So if that's our target, based on this structure, that will be in it there. And as you can see, this was a bullish move. So we can see the price came back down. It didn't quite reach it. Premature, selling off. Interesting enough, that yeah, that will, that is a bit early selling. And price dropped down there again. So what can we learn from here? Pretty much that formation again. not an easy one and I, I can't I can't admit that I would work that out it's it's an ugly shape because we got this breakdown would have had that and that would have been a signal to exit so that was that's a shakeout and then up it goes so there is a lesson there that these formations that was to retest this level so we would have had this middle section whoops we would have had this middle section as a majority of volume so this middle section of the triangle is based on Wyckoff's method a buy zone so when price comes breaks out of the triangle so what we have is this we have a triangle and what happens is it tends to break up, come down. Sometimes it comes down more. If it's very, if it's bullish, it will, will go that way through the triangle. Sometimes it dips, and then up it goes again. It's a bit of a shakeout, and that's what's taken place there. And if you were to identify this grey zone, that would have been a good buy zone, and then off it goes. So the rest is history and uh, and there's an uptrend so I would have traded the rest based on uh, the 10 20 moving average and I will look for cradle setups and so on so there was one there there's a triangle formation there how obviously if, if you if you bought here you would have held on to it because this is a bullish move once this level is broken as I, as I said, this, this big structure, once that, that was broken, and you can, you can sense what Bitcoin was doing at the time, you would not sell, you, you will hold. And so let's go to the 10, 20 moving average. And we would have looked for the four hour chart probably. Let's go back down. So we just covered that bottom formation. So let's put that all in. Okay. You can see based on the 10, 20 moving average, we we'll need to get rid of these two, the weeklies. That wouldn't help us there at the time. So we will trade these based on the, uh, the 10 and 20 moving average. <coughs> Sorry about that. 
little draw a string. So we've got this trend line. At the time, we'll just look at that. And you can see this ex ex bonding wedge or fan. And we can use a little more. You can see that is a little more structure and pretty much a very bullish structure it is. And if we were to look at that, I would say that is a, a key level of some sort. And we will need to use Fibonacci to figure that out. So if we were to look at the top, so that's a that is breaking past this previous top level, important level. So let's let's do Fibonacci extension. So if that was our <clears throat> if that's our reference point down, okay, we got two. So we don't have the one point six one eight. So we might have been doing something wrong here. That extension is likely to be six one eight. So is that our reference point there? Most likely. And there we go. So we need to use this this point here to the top, to the bottom. I think that was right on the bottom to the next bottom, which is roughly there, one of these buggers. And that is our 1.618. So slightly over performance, and that will be a selling point. That makes sense. And we've got the double double top and probably and you can see once we lost this this level, there will be an exit. Double top, if you can work that out. I would imagine there's a bearish divergence there. Small, but it's this is very hard to trade, gotta admit. Now if we look at so if we once we lost that, you can see dropping down to what is it? The one. Yes, one's always a good spot to buy. From 1.618 to the one is a good buy, and then you get this formation. So let's look at what took place. So once we got that as a reference point, and then we, we had this structure, and you can see it breaking down. So we've got this triangle breakdown, and we could have used that, this height, as a target. And it didn't quite go down there. So this this level kept it. So that would have been a hard trade. It was just watch and observe. <clears throat> so what do we have here? We have another triangle formation, a reversal formation. And again, this will be now trading op opportunity right there. We have confirmation breakout trade there. Press on the structure. We've got this 1350 crossover as our as our uh, confirmation and off it goes. So the, the height of this structure would have been our target and plus more. So we can see that could have been this whole structure there, isn't it? That looks like it's this whole structure. So excuse me for that. It would have been this point to that point. That would have been our A. Oh, sorry, that's our A. That's our B. That's our A, B, C, D, E. So from B to, to the base. Would have been our target. And it overperformed. Which is okay. And we can apply Fibonacci as to why. So if we were to from there to there to the bottom, the 618 was our target. It overperformed. And that's okay. So you can see this, well, a lot of this is making sense from a training perspective. Once that the target was hit, there was obviously 
new resistance. So now we are on the Wyckoff mode. This is reaccumulation or redistribution. And we once once we had this level of support, you can see we struggle to hold that and actually it did give us a good opportunity to buy. That that was a shakeout and test retested that level of support, I suppose. Right there. Well, it's on the breakout really, isn't it? So our breakout point was retested. That wouldn't have been easy to figure out to buy. Um, if you were watching the indicators, there might have been a, a bearish a bullish divergence, but I would say that would have been very hard to buy. Especially that, that that would have been ridiculous. Would have would have captured that, but that established our second point. From that point, that would have been our second pivot point. Now we've got established resistance, and that resistance level would have have a Fibonacci perspective. So if this was our bottom, and that was our top. Give or take a bit. It's close to the 618. So in this case, we've got to find out why. Let's let's look at um so we've got the log on. No, it doesn't quite give us the answer unless this is it there. Sorry. That makes sense. Again, the 618 would have been our spot. So it's slightly outperformed. And either way, we, we will use it as a reference point from there to there. And then you can see the confluence as being resistance later on. So that was a bit of a sell-off there. Um, who who would have to know? No idea. But that was. If that where would you say? So I wouldn't have traded that. That would have been pretty hard, and that would have been very quick. And then there was a sell-off, and it came back down to a base, and uh, that would have been a buying zone. It really tested it, and. Uh, so we would have had a reversal there as well. I made a reversal trade. It's there. And the breakout. So we would have, we would have traded the breakout. We would have, wouldn't have the confidence to buy. Because you would have thought maybe it will go down more. But the breakout would have been confirmation. And looking at this, you got the 1350 crossover again. Price hitting that range. So if you bought there, you'll acknowledge that there's a, a trend res resistance trend line. It pulled back to a Fibonacci level as we you would expect to 0.5 in this case. How how you would have traded this? Not easy. So that, that would have been a reason to sell. So this was a, a good uh, was a four hour trend to trade. The pullback would have been expected based on that trend line, selling off, double top, and then pulling out more. So this would have been evident A to B equals C to D, I would imagine. Almost. Yep. That's would have traded that as AB equals CD, and then a continuation. And we had many of these examples in the past, so that would have been the bottom. Then you can see how price that would have been. A good area this this has occurred so many times with Bitcoin similarly that would have been another opportunity to buy I would have been bullish at this point was that would have been the double bottom I would have recognized hopefully that that's the A B C this is a D the D pullback that would have been a buying opportunity so that would have been a better surprise but that we know that happens often so the second second level would have been bought the second time around and um, up, up it goes so we had a fake out looks like bit of a fake out there ah oh, sorry no we didn't 
wasn't a fake out. So Bitcoin was doing what it was doing. So you need to keep an eye on Bitcoin. And then we had that COVID incident where you just couldn't, you couldn't, this should have been a continuation, in my opinion. That would have been, that pullback was Bitcoin's, uh, Bitcoin hitting 10,000K right there. BTC equals 10K. So that would have been sign that we were going to go down. Bitcoin did a double head um, head and shoulders. This also looks like a head and shoulder structure based on this. So this this looks like a head and shoulder. Price drops. Does a retest on the neckline. So our target would have been based on this head and shoulder roughly there, which it did. But the COVID incident just messed things up. So that would have been our Pretty much close to it, our support line. And uh, yep, that makes sense. That would have been our level there, 618. So that would have been an area to buy and uh, and we swapped, stopped out. This, I can't answer it. It was a COVID, um, the COVID incident, Black Swan incident, and got to be brave to um, buy into that. But for those who did, Good on them. I, I bought it after the bounce somewhere around here. So I'm I wasn't brave enough to jump in for that and I wasn't quick enough. But that that is the bottoming of that on two, from 2018 to 2019 to the COVID incident. So that's let us leave it there and we'll continue on the next video to find out more lessons.